Anybody who follows any internet guitar forums or Facebook groups knows that guitar players can be a pretty finicky bunch and will go to quite extreme lengths to capture that maybe elusive tone that they hear in their head. Everything from buying multiple guitars, changing pickups out of a guitar to a different pickup, different speaker cabinets, different speakers, different amplifiers, different settings, different modelers, the settings on the modelers that we dive into and tweak for the slightest little change. Now, I'm not pointing any fingers here. I am just as guilty as the next person of being on that eternal quest for great tone, as we should be. But there is one thing that I very seldom hear spoken about that I believe could actually possibly have a larger effect than a lot of the other things that we kind of look to to tweak our tone. And the good news is it is something that we can all do without any expensive gear purchases or really without much investment of time. Now, you might wonder what I'm talking about. I am talking about simply adjusting the height of our pickups. Whether we're dealing with single coils or humbuckers, it doesn't matter. The height adjustment of our pickup can have a dramatic effect on our tone, but so few people seem to think of looking at that as a possible culprit for issues they may be having. Now today I'm going to give you some sound examples that I think are going to be quite interesting as well as some frequency graphs that are going to show some of the differences. Now I do have to say this though, I really try when I do any of these tests to keep things as scientific as possible. The problem with this is I'm going to have to actually perform the riff that I chose to play to showcase these audio clips. I'm going to have to play that numerous times. Now, there's no guarantee that I'm going to play that identically. In fact, it would be impossible. I really tried, and I think I did a pretty good job of making sure that I was hitting the same velocity or volume. I kept my pick at the same area on the strings, and I really tried to perform the riff as close as humanly possible. And I hope I got it close enough, but again, there really is no scientific way to do this because I do have to actually perform the riff at the different pickup height adjustment settings that I chose. So again, I'm not claiming this is anything scientific, but even with those variables, I think we're going to be able to come away with a pretty interesting example of just how much pickup height can affect our tone. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is just to open up some folks' eyes. Doing what I do here on my YouTube channel, I do get a lot of people sending me messages, asking me questions, and sometimes folks just can't figure out why no matter what they do, they can't seem to get the sound that they're after. And as I mentioned, very seldom is the topic of pickup height even mentioned. So hopefully after we go through today's examples, it just might open some folks' eyes to maybe think instead of going and swapping pickups out or changing guitars, that maybe with a very simple adjustment with a screwdriver, we can actually improve our tone and get it closer to where we want. So what am I going to do today? What I've done is I've taken my beautiful Vigier GV Wood Semi Hollow Body Guitar. This has Amber Pickups, a wonderful German company, really great humbucker pickup. And what I did is I adjusted the pickup, the bridge pickup to be exact, to different settings. I basically put it as far away from the strings as I could get it. I did another medium setting where it was kind of between the lowest and highest setting. And then I changed it up to the highest setting I possibly could. I performed the same riff as I mentioned, and really tried to concentrate on keeping it as consistent as possible, making sure I was hitting in the same area on the strings and with the same velocity. I did my best, and like I said, that's the one non-scientific part of this test that would be very difficult to get perfect. So I'm going to let you hear that. I'm going to show you what the pickup adjustments were and the height adjustments were so that you know precisely what I was dealing with. But then I went a step further and I actually used Voxengo's Curve EQ within Cubase to capture a comparison of the frequency response of all of those different height adjustments. Now, again, because I, it was different performances, this isn't scientific, but it, I thought it would just be of interest to some folks to just see the difference graphed out between those. Now, obviously, we're also gonna get different outputs, so I had to volume match 
the different pickup height adjustments. The pickups were closer to the strings. It was a louder output. There was more overdrive, as would be expected. But was that all we hear? Well, we're going to listen, and you can make up your own mind with the audio example. So I did volume match those. And then I went even one step further, and I took a totally different guitar with totally different pickups. This trusty Gibson Les Paul standard 60s with 60s burst buckers. And I adjusted the pickup height between the bridge pickup on my Les Paul with the bridge pickup on my Vigier GV Wood. Completely different pickups. This is a solid body. That's a semi-hollow body. Both Les Paul style guitars, but tons of variables. And I wanted to play you between the setting number two, where the pickups were kind of in the middle position between the lowest and highest, on both these guitars measured out exactly playing the same riff, you would expect a massive difference. And some folks may be surprised that the difference wasn't quite as large as one might think. And then I'm gonna show you at the end by splicing those two takes together where it switches at points where you're not going to know back and forth just to let you hear that as you're hearing the difference between the, the two different performances, one on the Gibson Les Paul, one on the Vigier GV Wood, it is maybe even kind of tricky to hear the difference, showing that maybe the pickup height adjustment has even more effect on the tone than changing guitars and pickups altogether. Now, there's obviously going to be differences in this, and I'm not trying to claim that there isn't or that they're the exact same tone, but it's just more to illustrate and as a bit of an eye-opener that maybe sometimes the things that we do to tweak our tone can be accomplished in other easier ways. So, Anyways, I'm not looking to start a war or an argument about any of this. This is just more to get folks hopefully thinking about another aspect to adjusting their tone that hopefully can solve some problems that some folks might be having. So without further ado, let's dive in, take a listen and a look at exactly what I did, and I hope you enjoy. All right, so first and foremost, here were the settings that I used. The first audio example you're gonna hear, or otherwise known as the first setting, has the bridge pickup on the treble side at 4.5 millimeters away from the bottom of the string and the bass side at 5.0 millimeters. Really, the measurement there has more to do with the thickness of the string as the pickup seems to be adjusted pretty evenly across. A little side note is the way that we do that is we press down at the final fret on the neck and we measure from the bottom of the string to the top of the pickup pole piece. That's how I did my measurements, just so everybody's aware. The second audio example you're going to hear is going to be the bridge pickup treble side at three millimeters and the bridge pickup bass side at 3.5 millimeters. The third audio example you're gonna hear or the third setting is going to be the bridge pickup treble side at 0.5 millimeters away from the strings, about as high as I could get it without the string actually hitting if I played and the bridge pickup side at 1.0 millimeters. Now, some things to keep in mind, the closer that we have the strings to the pickups, the stronger the magnetic field's gonna be and that's gonna have an effect on our tone. The further away the strings are, the lower output we're gonna have, and obviously the closer they are, the higher output we're gonna have. So we wanna listen to those things. The closer they are, we're obviously gonna get more overdrive and distortion. The further away, we're going to have a little bit less and a little less output, as I mentioned. So without further ado, here are these tones. I will have up on the screen what you are listening to at each moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mm-hmm. All right, what did you guys think of that? Obviously, quite dramatic differences. Same guitar, same pickup, nothing other than, obviously, like I mentioned, my performance, which I tried to keep very consistent. But the only other variable was simply the height of the pickup. Quite a dramatic difference. So for some folks who feel like maybe my pickups are always seem too high output, maybe they're adjusted too high. Maybe we simply back those off by a millimeter, millimeter and a half, or a couple millimeters, and it really fixes everything, and we're much more happy with the tones that are coming out of that guitar. It's a possibility and worth trying. Now, before you do any adjustments on your pickups, I would always say to mark the original settings so that you can easily return it back to where they were just in case you really don't like any of the other settings as much as what you started with. So without really going into it, I want to leave those audio examples for you to listen through to and come up with your own conclusions. But it's more just to illustrate the dramatic difference we can have from simply adjusting the height of the pickup. Also now, let's take a look at the frequency response graphs of the various different settings. Again, first setting is going to be the pickup being farthest away. Now, compared to the third setting, we see that there is somewhat of a difference in the frequency response here. But again, keep in mind, some of that will definitely be simply from the variable of how I performed it. But I still think that you're obviously going to have a different frequency response just based off of the height of the pickup. Then we compare one versus two, and we have this result. And then taking a look at all three settings, one, two, and three overlaid over one another, this is what we get. Now, one other thing I did is I thought, well, you know, when the pickup is really close to the strings, that is obviously raising the output, but is it doing anything else? Is that magnetic field affecting things? I thought, what would happen if we roll the guitar volume back so that the gain level matches much more closely to one of our other settings? So what I did is I compared a fourth sound setting, which was the pickups at their highest adjustment, closest to the strings, with the guitar volume rolled back to kind of mimic setting number two. So now let's take a look at the frequency response of that And this is what that frequency response graph looked like between those two. But we also want to give those two a listen. So here is the sound of setting number two, where the pickup was basically around the midway setting, to the pickup as close to the strings as we could get it, but with the guitar volume rolled back. And finally, as I mentioned before, I took my Gibson Les Paul with Gibson Burstbucker 60s pickups in it and compared that to my completely different Vigier GV Wood semi hollow body with amber pickups in it. We would expect these to sound completely different. I made sure that the pickup heights were matched exactly so we can see is a pickup height adjustment going to give us even more of a change of tone than swapping to completely different guitars with different pickups. Very interesting stuff. Here's how that sounded. Is there a difference? Of course there's a difference. There has to be, but how much of a difference it was in comparison to simply adjusting maybe a dramatic change in the pickup height 
is quite an interesting thing. What I did finally here is I spliced together those two takes now and switched at probably not very predictable points through the riff to see if anybody can pick out when it's switching from the Vigier GV Wood to the Gibson Les Paul. I'm going to play you that now, and then I will also play it for you again, marking where the switches were. So we'll do it blind first, and then I'll reveal that after where the switches between the guitars were. <laughs> All right, so there's the splice together performance. Were you able to hear where those splice points were, those edit points were? I don't know, I hope you can. There's obviously a difference, but it's a bit of an eye opener that maybe it's not quite as dramatic as we thought it was gonna be. Here's that audio file again, but now I'll show you where it's switching between the different guitars. <laughs> All right, what did you think? Pretty interesting stuff. I'm not here to tell you what I think about this. This was just an exercise to hopefully open some folks' eyes to the fact that a simple adjustment of our pickup height can have quite a dramatic effect. And maybe that is the final piece of the puzzle that we need to finally get that elusive tone we've been trying to get or to get closer to what we've been trying to attain and we can do it without spending any more money. Unless you don't own a screwdriver, you might have to buy one of those. But we could possibly already have what we need right in the guitar and pickup we have just by making a simple adjustment. It might get things closer to what we have been searching for tone-wise. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that that was interesting. And I hope it really helps some folks to maybe take a step in the right direction towards getting closer, as I mentioned, to that tone that they've been after. So thank you guys so much for watching. Watching, please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of watching it. And also please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. Thank you guys again so much for sharing your time with me. I hope you enjoyed that. See you very soon. Ciao for now.